Graham G. and Matthew Sherwood with Bleach Report Fan Sided and WrestleRan today for the second time in two years now. We're talking to Michael Kingston of Headlock Comic ahead of uh, Tales from the Road Volume 3. We talked about Volume 2 two years ago. I was just saying to you, Michael, right before we hit record here, it doesn't feel like it's been two years. I thought I just talked. I literally thought we had chatted last fall, but it was actually two years ago, which is crazy. But what's going on, man? Thanks for joining me. Uh, yeah, it's time is time definitely feels like a lot more of a nebulous concept since the pandemic as, you know, something <laughs> yeah. could, something that felt like yesterday was like four years ago and yeah. whatever, but it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been good. Just trying to, we're, we have a, what I think is a pretty solid collection of talent, um, on Tales from the Road and I've, uh, this is my first weekend off the road in four weeks. So I'm uh, still recovering a little bit. I was in Salt Lake City with Scott Steiner last weekend and nice. uh, Baltimore, Austin, Rochester, New York. So it's just kind of all over the place. And we were just chatting before we hit record here. You're going to New York Comic Con as well in a couple of weeks. Are you there all four days or just certain days? Yeah, I know. We have a booth in New York. It's the same space that we have every year for people that have been. Um, and we'll have, uh, we'll have Mick Foley. I, believe we'll have a couple other guests but i'm still working that out um mm-hmm. just trying to get through the kickstarter right now is our, our main priority and then i'll deal with new york when uh when i'm done with that when it comes yeah no it's, thankfully it's not for another couple of weeks so it's not really uh coming up you know too imminently it's it, it's a couple of weeks away but the last time oh, we had chatted, way closer than i needed to be <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> definitely not definitely not far enough when we had talked about volume two it was also around this time in like the fall, like October, does it just work out that way where you have it come out around this time? Or is it something that you plan on purpose? Cause I feel like right now, like you said, you're on the road, you're so busy. And then you're also out here promoting this thing as well. Is that just a coincidence or what's the process there? Like there's two, I mean, there's two really, for me anyway, there's two really big times for conventions. There's the March, April, um, cause there's C2E2 and yeah. Emerald city and WrestleMania WonderCon, so there's a big stretch where i can usually run from like march through april like nonstop, mm-hmm. and then there's another july august september there's a bunch of shows so it's just those are the two sort of best times for me to run big campaigns just because i have the shows to support it i can be on the road and talk to people about it and that uh it definitely helps move the needle a little bit yeah, I mean, among the many things you got going on, including this one with Tales from the Road Volume 3, with the process of the last one coming out two years ago, has the process in getting this one made been more difficult, different as far as between one and two and now two and three, just as far as like getting people to sign on for it? I would imagine not because you've already established so many different connections with so many people that have contributed to it, funding it, checking it out. You have a core base at this point. Uh, is it been any different as far as that sort of stuff goes? It's always tricky. Um, like my biggest thing, I mean, since the, since the advent of AEW, it's gotten a lot harder just because there's a lot of people under contract now. Mm-hmm. So that always adds an element of uh, risk or, you know, a potential no or whatever. But I, I, I actually had two people that were slated for this collection that had to pull off, um, you know, that I was negotiating with, not Mm -hmm. whatever, but you know, uh, that both had contract, uh, negotiations and, you know, one person chose to leave, um, the company that she was at. And, Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it makes it harder. I mean, I've done stories with people when they're under WWE contract. Like, I don't think anybody, you know, I don't compete with anybody because WWE, neither WWE or AEW makes comics and I'm not exactly taking money on anybody's pocket. So, yeah. and I think I have so much cachet with different, you know, with talent that people don't mess with me, but I'm not, I mean, I'm not out to mess with anybody's, you know, yeah. six figure contract or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, I don't blame anybody if they're like, Hey, you know, I'd rather wait till in a, a different time. And that happens a lot. You know, yeah. I'd, uh, I'd talked to, you know, I had talked to Bray Wyatt in between his, uh you know his stint in wwe and you know and then he ended up going back and like there were a bunch of people that had been released that were on the sort of on the indie circuit that i had been dealing with and then you know when vince retired and triple h sort of you know there was a mass exodus back like i had a lot of stuff sort of planned with Mm -hmm. uh some of that talent so it's uh it's tricky i'm nobody's priority and i don't expect to be you know like i'm just trying to make cool wrestling comics i'm not getting rich I still work a full-time job. Um, You know, I just want to make comics and, you know, it's fun to jam with people who I respect creatively. 
So it's, uh, you know, I do what I can. And I just, you know, it's like being an ant at a picnic. You know, I'm just kind of running around while these monsters are, you know, stepping and trying not to get stepped on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the case of like when these talents go back to WWE, for example, or go to a different company, is it their choice as far as like, I may not have the time to contribute? Like what from their standpoint would be the reason why they wouldn't want to talk wouldn't want to take part is it because of a timing thing and schedule on their part or is it going to be another factor no i, I mean wwe technically i mean i think technically they're not supposed to okay. do outside projects without wwe's approval some people do you know some people just some people don't care and they're <laughs> cool with it and for a little while there was a little sort of nebulous hole in the nxt contracts uh which is how i was able like I did a story with uh, Mustafa Ali when he was, you know, in NXT because they had that sort of where they were, they were letting them run pro wrestling tea stores and do stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. And I had done a story with Dolph Ziggler just because he's had, had enough tenure that he could kind of do what he wanted and nobody really gave him a hard time. Mm. So, you know, it's it's just different. Um, you know, and some people just, you know, WWE is a place that, you know, I think sometimes it's, you know, it's a big corporate place and people can get, squirrely about stuff so i think a lot of times people are just trying to walk the line and not do something that gets their you know their push messed with or whatever so yeah i guess when it comes to either company specifically like wwe or AEW, when it comes to like these bigger companies and talents that are in them that would definitely partake in them or would be perfect fits for them you talk about like they can't do outside projects which is true which you know i, I guess makes sense to a certain degree but for something like this just partaking in a comic like what from wwe standpoint or aew is so bad about that like i i that i don't understand i don't think either company has ever said they couldn't do it okay. i think it's more of an issue of talent i mean i've i've had i've actually had some people get turned down from uh from aew but i don't think wwe has ever said anything that they mm -hmm. couldn't do it i think it's just more of a matter of not wanting to ask and i don't blame them like i said yeah you know what i mean like I'm a small little wrestling comic. I'm not going to make anybody rich. I'm not making myself rich. You know what I mean? Like we're just doing <laughs> some cool, fun stuff, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't, again, like you've seen people get, you've seen people's pushes get derailed or whatever over real petty stuff. In yeah. The past. So yeah. I don't blame anybody for wanting to walk the line there. I guess for me, the WWE thing, like you said, the environment there from what we can kind of tell with this sort of stuff, pushes getting derailed for small, petty stuff. I guess I've there's a track record there. I guess for the AEW thing, they're just so much more seemingly, from what it's looked like in the last couple of years, more willing to work with outside companies and ventures and projects. You would think that one would be more of an open door. Obviously, there's a lot of talent on this Volume 3 from AEW that participated. We'll get into that. Uh, but you would think AEW would be a little different. Has it been from your experience, or is it kind of the same thing? I mean, I really haven't had a lot of trouble with anybody, mm -hmm. um, you know, for the most part, like I said, I mean, some people get, you know, Hey, I'm under, I'm going to be under contract. I don't want to mess with stuff or I'm, I'm negotiating. And I just kind of, I don't want this on my plate while I'm negotiating and that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. and I understand all of that. Like I said, I, I know I'm not anybody's priority. I just, you know, I'm happy to do what I can do. And there's a million talents that I can work with at any given time. I mean, I've got five or six people, ready to go, you know, at a moment's notice, like they like said, I, I had two talents slated for this. They had to, they had to, you know, bow out for this one. So, mm -hmm. and I had two people ready to take their place. Um, and then like, you know, I'm doing a book with Trish Stratus next month. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, I, I just kind of have to, when you're, when you're a little guy in the big, you know, in a big world and you're doing something that nobody else is doing, you just, you have to be fluid. You have to react. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've had, I mean, I've had a ton of, I mean, the, with what we've been able to accomplish, I mean, I've had, I, I've had almost an equal sized amount of career of disappointments. You know, I'd had a, an agreement with Roddy Roddy Piper to do a story and we were going to set it, we were going to put it together at a convention and he died six days before the show. Wow. Um, you know, uh, the ultimate warrior, I had conversations with him about painting a cover for my book. Cause he was actually a painter. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and obviously he passed away. Um, just, I had, uh, I was talking with Nakamura about doing something right before he went to WWE, you know, wow. like it's, it's just, you know, there's just sometimes things happen and it's fine. I mean, like I said, I, I feel like for a guy that, you know, makes multiple comics out of his out of his bedroom and I, i've been doing it for 15 years and i've got an incredible yeah. roster of 
collaborators, you know, I just, I'm proud of everything that we've accomplished. And I know I've got way more, you know, many, many more stories in us. Um, I got a ton of collaborations. I got some, uh, you know, I've had some talks with some people in Hollywood that are sort of tangentially uh, associated with wrestling that mm-hmm. would be uh, cool collabs. So I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm just here for the collaboration and I'm here to do some cool stuff and I don't worry about the rest of it. You know, I do what yeah, I can yeah. do and what I can, I can't and we make it work. Yeah, no, for sure. You just got to be flexible, like you said. And I'm sure we talked about it last time, but of all the people that you've worked with on these Tales from the Road comics specifically, I'm sure it's hard to narrow it down to just one person. But like, who's been like the best person, your favorite person to work with on this or the easiest in, in any particular case? Well, it's tough. I mean, honestly, most of the most of the talent has been really, really easy. Um, I mean, probably the two stories that I think were the fastest to put together were... Uh, the story I did with Hurricane and the story I did with AJ Styles. Mm-hmm. But I think the two of us, both of those guys, we always really sort of vibe together real easy creatively. John Morrison was a real easy collab. Um, I mean, there really haven't been too many difficult collabs. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as this book goes, the newest one, um, the inspiration one means a lot to me just because I was the first thing that they agreed to do after leaving WWE. Um and, you know, they had had uh, issues with their visas and they had, they, so they didn't do anything for a few months. And then uh, I was, you know, they said that they had put everything down, all the offers they had and stuff. And, and mine was the first thing that they agreed to do. So that's cool. And they said it was their favorite thing that they've done outside of WWE. Um, wow. So that's, you know, that's cool when you, when you get that level of, uh, you know, enjoyment and whatever working with people. And they were, they were really fun to, they were really fun to collaborate with. They pushed the project in directions that I didn't think of that ended up making it so much better. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, it's uh, and that's the fun part about it, I guess, more than anything else. But yeah, I mean, for this collection, nobody's been diff- nobody was difficult at all. Mm-hmm. Um, they were all real, real easy. Well, speaking of the inspiration, Jessica McKay of the Iconics of the Inspiration is part of Tales from the Road Volume Three. Powerhouse Hobbs, Jay White, Dirty Dango, Cassie Lee as well. Andrade, Amy Dumas, and Adam Cole, and Trinity Fatu, of course, of absolutely. Um, has there been anyone of the three volumes that you've done? I mean, obviously the Iconics, the inspiration you worked with on that previous project, and now this one. But from the Tales from the Road specifically, has there been anyone that you've worked with twice on purpose, or do you try to avoid repeats? Uh, I did two stories with Rob Van Dam. Uh, we had, uh, and Rob was one of the earliest supporters of Headlocked um, mm-hmm. from the beginning. Like some of the, the hardcore comics guys were the guys that really helped, sort of get me going hurricane rob van dam christopher daniels moa joe uh jerry lawler obviously Mm -hmm. um you know like those are the guys that really help give me credibility and sort of push me you know give me a good start and um so i had done a story with rob for uh a bonus story for headlocked for a kickstarter that we ended up incorporating into volume one and then uh we were just we were at a convention and we had a great idea for a story that was uh uh, it was in uh, we did it in volume two and it's uh it's very much uh, a, a riff on reefer madness but it's not about drugs so interesting um that's one of my favorite stories that we've done i think it's yeah. one of the more entertaining ones and uh i think anybody that reads it everybody that reads it loves it so um you know sometimes this the if the if the story is there if the, something hits us the right way or whatever um you know it's uh at least everything is very fluid with me yeah. He seems like a super creative guy too, Rob Van Dam. So that doesn't surprise me at all. He that is, he'd just be, he is. That he'd be uh, such a great supporter of the, uh, you know, everything that you do. And, uh, you know, like John Morrison, like I've done oh, same thing, shows yeah. with John Morrison. We sit down, we're just always just riffing on ideas and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, AJ was like that. Joe was like that. I mean, by nature, I think everybody in wrestling is a storyteller. Yeah. They're telling stories in the ring, you know, and they, so they have to understand the concepts of storytelling. And then, you know, just you're in the car, between shows you're bat, you know you're catering whatever yep. they're just telling stories so i mean they're really sort of even if they don't understand it like understand their ability like it's all they all have it. it's all very yeah. you know it's all been sharpened after years of doing what they do so it's it's usually pretty easy 
Yeah. Now I'm sure more than most people, they're just natural storytellers by nature, like you said. Um, but like looking at this lineup for this volume, for volume three of Tales from the Road, what's like the process in getting these people as far as like you come off of one and two and you try not to have anyone a second time aside from Rob Van Dam. Like, is there like a list of people like, all right, this is someone I would want to have contribute or do you look, I mean, like you said, it's a flexible situation because people are constantly, especially nowadays, jumping from company to company. You never know what might happen. But like with Jay White, for example, or Dirty Dango, like, do you want these people specifically or is it just kind of something that happens organically? Um, It depends. It's, it's, it's very different. Everyone is different. Sometimes people find me, you know, I've had people reach out to me that got released last week already. Um. They want to do stuff. I've, you know, sometimes people find me, sometimes I find them. I mean, I do conventions all the time. So I'm always around a lot of wrestlers, um, you know, and I can be, like I have enough cachet, I think in places, like I can be backstage at Raw, if Raw's in town or whatever. And like, you know, so like sometimes you just have these interactions and then you like, you come up, you know, a story hits you, you know, I, uh, I came up with a, and I haven't, we haven't done it yet, but I had to come up with a story idea with boogeyman that uh we were in a hotel room with steve austin and hurricane watching wrestlemania and just he just said something i was like man that'd be a great story and we just haven't had the time to do it yet you know like but it's there and some it's just sometimes it's work sometimes it's easy but you know everything's different it all just depends has anyone surprised you as far as anyone that's reached out to you or people that you've reached out to i mean like you said everyone's a storyteller by by heart for the most part in the wrestling business that was just like completely un exactly if that's even a word who you expect them to be or how you expect them to be any interaction with any of these wrestlers on this volume or any other volume that really surprised you mm. no i think there probably was a time that i might have but yeah. like i think i've just i've been doing it for 15 years now so like i think when i started you know you look at you look at the talent as the talent that you see on tv but yeah. i don't approach people like that anymore just because I've been doing conventions for years. I mean, I was just in Salt Lake city this weekend with Scott Steiner and we were, you know, we we're sitting at a table with Tom Welling and Christopher Lloyd and like all these, you know, just eating lunch <laughs> with all these super famous people that, you know, I have no business being around, but you know yeah. what I mean? Like you, you sort of learn to, I guess, look at people a little bit differently. Um, so I, I guess I try to approach everything with no preconceptions. The one thing that does always surprise me is when guys have art skills. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things we've done for, you know, when we were doing uh, the main issues of Headlocked, we would do some uh, bonus art collaborations. And, you know, Booker T drew a piece for the book. And, uh, you know, Fred Oppman and Tugboat drew a piece for the book. Uh, Dexter Loomis has obviously done a couple pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, Ken Anderson drew a piece in Bodie. So, like, that always surprised me, you know, when like when a when a guy like the size of Tony Atlas comes up to you and he's like, Hey, I can draw, and you're like, Okay, whatever. And then he's doing pointillism, you know, and you have this big dude hunched over a desk doing little dots on a yeah. picture. Like, you know, that stuff tends to surprise me a little bit more than uh anybody's storytelling abilities and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you talk about specifically that last comic con you mentioned christopher lloyd and scott steiner in the same sentence are you guys eating lunch like together are they in the same room coexisting or those two different people at, the, at two different times no 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 like we're all at the table at once you know like they have a catering in the back and yeah you know so you know we'll go in the green room and sit down that's crazy there's only so many tables right so people just sit at your table and then you end up talking and I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I, I once I sat with Carrie always one time for like 40 minutes talking about Andre the Giant. Like That's awesome. Um, and that's the coolest thing, right? Like I make comics out of my bedroom. <laughs> um, I don't even exist in the world of comics because I don't use the comic book apparatus. Like I built this completely grassroots and organic and, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I just, you know, weird stuff happens, you know, like Billy Zane texted me once and he's like, Hey, I'm going into this pitch meeting. Send me a pitch for your books. I want to talk to him about it. You know, wow. like, and it's just, you know, it's a, it's a weird thing to think about, right? Like a guy, yeah. you know, there's some random dude who manages a fleet of truck drivers. And then like, you know, one time somebody, you know, some, I, I think Booker, it was Booker T I think called me in the morning to ask me if I had vanilla ice's phone number. And I'm like, it's <laughs> such a weird, such a weird existence sometimes. Yeah. But yeah. I've, uh, I've been around so many famous people. I lunch with, uh, you know, uh, the guy that played Jamie Lannister in Game of Thrones, he was asking awesome. all these questions about wrestling and wow, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, 
it's weird sometimes, but it's, uh, you know, you try not to lose, I try not to lose sort of my sense of wonder with everything. You sure. know, I think that's the sort of the best way to approach stuff. Like I'm still a fan of everything yeah. and uh, I'm still a fan of wrestling. I'm still a fan of comics and, you know, and those are my favorite wrestlers to be around. There's definitely wrestlers who are still fans and, uh, you know, Shane Helms is a perfect example of that. He's still just a fan of everything, even though he's in the business and works in the business or whatever, but like never loses that enthusiasm for the stuff that he loves. And mm -hmm. you know, Lisa Marie is like that. And then there's so much fun to be around, um, you know, versus the, yeah, he's marks and whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. So I, uh, I, those are the people I tend to, tend to gravitate towards, but uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. I've been really lucky. Wrestling has been very, very good to me. No, that's awesome. I mean, I'm sure you're used to it at this point. Again, doing it for 15 years now, you interact with all these people. Has there been one interaction, maybe not just probably with wrestling, I guess, because that's what you're just used to. But I mean, specifically with the other side of the celebrities, like you said, the guy from Game of Thrones, Christopher Lloyd, people like that, where you randomly find yourself in the same place as one of these people. And you're like, having grown up the biggest back to the future fan or something like that. Has there been one of those interactions that you really cherish more than most? So in Raleigh in August, um, I got to meet Harry Hamlin, who was Perseus in the original Clash of the Titans. Wow. And like as a kid, that was my thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was in the green room and uh, I saw him. It was breakfast. And uh, I just went over to say hi to him to see if I could, you know, get like a quick selfie or whatever. And he ended up inviting me to sit down with him at breakfast. And I sat with him for like 25 minutes. And he was talking about Clash of the Titans. And I was like nine years old <laughs> again, like... And it was just amazing to, you know, he was telling me all this sort of back, you know, sort of behind the scenes stuff and what it was like to film. I mean, he was so, so gracious. It's so unbelievably cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he says that, you know, he's never read a comic book. He said when he was younger, like to, to something like that would give him a headache or whatever. And so he asked if he could see my book. So I brought him a comic book and he's like, this is going to be the first comic book I ever read. Wow. And like, how unbelievable is that? Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna put this up in my cabin, and you know, people can check it out when they come to stay with me and whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's I mean, I was <laughs> you know, you couldn't tell me shit for like two days. You know? Yeah, I was yeah, like, this is great. That's so, pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I mean, and that's I don't know, and that's ultimately what I'm what I'm all about. Like, I mean, we raise a lot of money for these books, but I'm the last guy taking money out of this thing. You know, mm. and every bit of every dollar goes back into the into the machine you know we make more mm. stuff we make more comics we make them bigger you know bigger names whatever so it's uh it's it really is just a labor of love which is kind of what you need when you know you're on the road i mean you're on the road so much and then working and i mean i've had a particularly hellacious six weeks with travel and you know my job being difficult and whatever my dog is not in the greatest of health and whatever but like just it's been a it's a it's a grind i don't sleep mm -hmm. a lot I, I bet you i haven't slept three consecutive hours in six weeks wow um so you know uh but it's it's you know at the end of the day it's, it's I, I do it all over again a thousand times out of a yep. thousand no, and it pays off with stuff like this. Again, the success you've already had with the, you know, you want to get the pre-orders up and stuff like that. And just the the funding for it's almost complete. That's what we're talking right now before the Kickstarter ends next week. I should have mentioned that on October 3rd. People could check it out, obviously. And I'm sure we talked about it last time as well. Maybe the answer has changed. And I'm sure it's an answer or a question rather you get a lot. Is there someone that's like the dream collab for you? I guess maybe a two-part question. One in wrestling and maybe one not in wrestling. That's either... Maybe not even necessarily close, and maybe it's unrealistic. But who are your like dream collabs as far as comics go? Um, I would love to, you know, obviously like you know the big names, Rock, Austin, Paul, Paul Heyman is probably one that I would love to. Um, he knows me. I he knows who I am. Like I've talked to him a couple times. I mean, mm -hmm. he's not gonna be able to do anything, you know, whatever. But you know, maybe down the road we'll be able to do something. But. uh he is definitely a, a dream collaborator. Um, Sami Zayn is somebody that I would love to collaborate oh, with. Yeah. Um, and then uh, outside of uh, outside of wrestling, um, Chris Bauer was just in heels. Um, he was in The Wire. Like Frank Sabaka was like my favorite. Like The Wire was like my favorite show, and Frank Sabaka was like my favorite character on that show. Mm -hmm. So, and obviously knowing that he loves wrestling, like that would be somebody really cool to uh, to get to work with. But uh, 
I mean, ultimately, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm not anybody special. So I'm always grateful when anybody who, uh, you know, shares their, uh, you know, shares their light with me or whatever, you know, like that's just the, it's the coolest experience in the world. So I just want to, you know, I just want to keep it going. You know, anybody that's got a story to tell. No, for sure. And people keep on checking it out as uh, Volume 3 releases soon. People can check that out among your many other projects around the road right now, all across the country. People can check you out at all these various Comic-Cons, like I said, including New York Comic-Con. I'll be at that one in a couple of weeks, so I hope to check you out there. But before then, though, talking about Volume 3, you're all over the place on, on, on social media, on X, as they call it now, Kickstarter. Where can people find you and where can people support the project? Everything is Headlocked Comic. It's one word. It's my website. It's all of our socials. If we're on a platform, that's what that's what we're going to be um and then i guess the one thing i do want people to know about the kickstarter is that we have four covers exclusive covers for the collection that are only mm -hmm. available through kickstarter we have an adam cole cover a trinity fatu cover a powerhouse Hobbs cover and a jay white cover wow and they're only available through the kickstarter um we did this for dan Housen for volume two when uh, he broke his leg and i mean you can't find one of those for less than 100 bucks on ebay if mm -hmm. they ever pop up so like if you're a fan of any of these talents, this is going to end up being one of the more limited things that they've been a part of. And they're all gorgeous. Um, you know, we did a video game of Thrones kind of thing with Adam Cole where he's sitting on the throne. It's made of video game weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a, a Chicago inspired Trinity Fatu cover by Lauren Moran uh, with lots of, lots of just amazing stuff. And I think that, uh, you know, we also have, uh, it's completely customizable. We have like signed Undertaker stuff. I have signed, uh, I have the first thing that I'm pretty sure all four members of Judgment Day ever signed. Um, wow. An art print. We have uh, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, you can bag it for the book, but there's tons of, you know, you can, you can sort of customize your campaign for wherever you want. You want to sign, you know, we have a signed art print by the Hardy Boys, by Bret Hart, by Jake Roberts. Um, there's all kinds of, we have variant covers, regular covers, you name it. Like, you know, you can get a digital copy for $15 and you can, you know, or, you you know, <laughs> I mean, I currently have a backer that's over a thousand dollars who wants everything. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's completely customizable to whatever experience you want. That's awesome. There's a lot you can get out of it, obviously. So uh, four different covers is quite the variety. So that's pretty awesome. I'll definitely be checking that out. I hope other people check it out as well. Michael, I appreciate the time and look forward to seeing you soon. And I'm, I got to say with the with these comics, there's got to be a comic at some point. You intrigued me with the Scott Steiner, Christopher Lloyd sit down lunch thing. If there's a comic about that, and what you guys were talking about on the first one to sign up, just to let you know. <laughs> Fair enough.